Coming up next on Behind the Badge, could your teen be hiding something illegal in their bedroom? Educating parents on what to look for. Cybercrimes on the Rise, teaching the next generation of cybersecurity workers. Expanding the MPD Chaplain Program, how they can help you during a time of tragedy. A safe and happy ending to a nationwide Amber Alert. Meet the officers who helped save a three-year-old girl. Plus, canine training and much more. Behind the Badge starts right now. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Flowers. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Badge, an inside look at news and newsmakers of the Murfreesboro Police Department. Murfreesboro Police work closely with the Prevention Coalition for Success in the Prevention of Substance Misuse in Youth and Young Adults. Recently, the nonprofit partnered with the Tennessee Counter Drug Task Force Stashed Away Trailer to educate parents on ways to tell if their children have hidden secrets in their bedrooms. The Tennessee National Guard Counter Drug Task Force Stashed Away Trailer mimics the daily life of a youth a bedroom used for more than just sleeping. It looks like a typical bedroom. There are some items that look like very normal items that are maybe have hidden compartments that parents may have no idea what they're looking at. Um, even things from just missing shoelaces that just might warrant a further conversation. Um, but a lot of um, just areas that things may be hidden that parents may completely overlook. We can't show you where the most common places or items a teen may hide drugs or alcohol in their bedroom or bathroom, but often it's in plain sight. The purpose is to educate the community and especially parents or adults that work with kids about anything that might need to, might warrant a further, warrant a further conversation with their kids. A further conversation about substance abuse. Primary substance misuse, so drugs and alcohol, anything from marijuana to prescription um, drug abuse, um, or just alcohol misuse in underage kids. Educating parents is key. Something that might raise some red flags, indicate that there's some substance misuse happening and that they need to talk to their kids about that. There may also be cultural items and terminology that young people are using related to drugs and alcohol which parents may not be familiar with. The coalition is hoping parents will take the time to know what could be lurking behind closed doors. Parental involvement is a really important protective factor for kids in preventing substance uh, misuse. And so whatever we can do to encourage parents to be involved in their kids' lives, provide healthy activities, be supportive of their kids, Prevention Coalition for Success offers quite a bit of information about substance misuse, stress, mental health, and even coping during COVID-19. You can visit their website, pc4s.org. You may want to think twice the next time you swipe your credit or debit card at the gas pump or give out personal information online. That's because criminals are using cyber crimes to try and steal your hard-earned money. MPD Cybercrimes Detective Tyler Smith recently visited cybersecurity students at Lipscomb University to share his knowledge about the profession as the students prepare to enter the workforce. In a world of digital technology, automation and smart devices have become more prevalent to data breaches, hacking, and cybercrimes. If I want to take your information and put it on a card, how would I capture your PIN number? Information security students at Lipscomb University are getting real-world experience and examples of cybercrimes from Murfreesboro Police Department's cybercrimes detective, Tyler Smith. Today's topic, payment systems attacks, like skimming at the gas pump. Discuss primarily the benefits of uh, using cybersecurity to combat uh, payment system attacks. Looking for criminals who put devices on gas pumps using Bluetooth and other technology to steal bank and credit card information is only the beginning. Detective Smith deals with all types of cyber crimes. Generally, day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, my job revolves mostly around digital forensics, and uh, that does include uh, cyber forensics as well. So uh, skimming is just a very, very small portion of what I do. Mostly, uh, I deal with computer forensic examinations to recover evidence that we need to, uh, 
to help detectives solve different crimes, uh, whether it be homicide cases, uh, uh, ICAC cases, and different type of uh, financial crime investigations. And ransomware cases too. This is where a business, customers, or even you can have personal information compromised by hackers. A new thing is ransomware as a service. You know, you can pay somebody to license you their ransomware attack to use against a certain customer. Smith is also working with the Secret Service Cyber Fraud Task Force in solving cyber crimes. Dr. Chris Simmons is an associate professor of information security in the Lipscomb University College of Computing and Technology. He says this type of hands-on experience helps students decide on a career. Just understanding what they want to do as it potentially relates to cybersecurity, whether it's software development or physical security or network security. Students took away a lot of knowledge, but some lessons learned as well. I think the biggest lesson is don't try this at home. Like there were several students who asked questions as it relates to how can I get this, you know, online. According to Professor Simmons, Lipscomb University information security students have a 100% job placement rate upon graduation. They often land corporate jobs with companies like Amazon and Apple. When a traumatic event like the loss of a loved one happens in our community, MPD chaplains are there to give spiritual and emotional support, not only for residents, but also police officers. I want to talk about our to brother's keeper. We address uh, the disenfranchised, um, the sick and shut in, and those for whatever reason, just can't make the traditional Sunday service. Pastor Veronica Williams has been spreading the word of God through Caleb's Generation Ministry for years. This opportunity to go to the people instead of waiting for the people to come to me, it's, uh, it's impactful. Now she's hoping to make an impact in Murfreesboro as one of MPD's newest volunteer chaplains. We need to be available to the officers as well as their families to meet whatever needs they have, uh, and certainly to the community, um, notices of fatalities and, and things of that nature, and uh, just to help people that are in a terrible, trying situation. The police chaplain program was established in 2018. The primary goal is to create a partnership with faith-based leaders and mental health professionals to assist law enforcement in providing the quality of service provided to the community, especially during times of crisis. This is one of the main streets we go down. There's a lot of older people that come out here and sit around and chill. On this day, Chaplain Williams is joining Cops Officer Brittany Rush on patrol. So how long have you been on this team? I honestly just got on this team about Two, three months Getting to know the community and residents. Good to see you. See, you. God bless you. MPD currently has six chaplains from all walks of life, faith, and backgrounds. They provide really a vital link between us and the community. It allows people to come and know us as more than just this blue suit we wear because we really want to be involved in our community and we think they're a vital part of us reaching out in that direction. MPD chaplains are a comforting presence for residents and officers during some of the most trying times. It's an overwhelming opportunity and I, and I like that I'm a part of a community, this city, that cares that much and thinks that much about the community. To prove that uh, we're not just doing lip service, we're here to help you and to uh, be actual peace officers. The chaplains go through a background check, interview and screening process, training, and then final approval from the chief of police. An MPD K-9, several MPD officers and Rutherford County Sheriff's deputies helped track down a North Carolina man wanted for murdering his wife and bringing his three-year-old daughter to Tennessee who was the subject of an Amber Alert. The father was arrested, the little girl is fine, but her family wanted to meet the officers that saved her. <laughs> The 
the best feeling in the world. <laughs> All the nerves left and I was just at peace finally getting to hold her. It was immediately, thank God, <laughs> I'm glad she's safe. Now how can I get her back home? It was just a lot of relaxation over it, I guess you would say, because I knew that she wasn't harmed and I was gonna eventually be able to get her back home safe. And we are very grateful. Um, you kept our little girl safe and you took care of her like she was your own. And we'll never be able to thank y'all enough for everything. Y'all have, you've just made it. It's, it's been awesome. I know mom would be awful proud how everything happened. So originally, I didn't even know that it was a missing person or a missing girl call. I just went because someone had fled from a vehicle. So I got there, um, got my dog out, sent him off of a beer can that I found in the car. And it kind of progressed while we were tracking. Um, and then you know, we ended up crossing South Church Street and Bo took a ride into the parking lot of the hotel and went straight up to the male subject. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, best case scenario, you don't really hear a lot of best case scenarios, but we got lucky this time. And what about Bo? He's always happy. <laughs> He's always happy. He's always on cloud nine, so. Did Bo get an extra tree there? Small? Yes, he did. He got some bacon that night. I had originally knocked on the uh, hotel uh, door, made contact with the clerk, and showed her the picture of the uh, suspect and Riley, and she confirmed that she just saw him on camera. Uh, I had her show me which camera, and I was able to physically see uh, him and her on the camera, and I confirmed what room they were by, and at that point I called for more units to come in and secure the area. And once we got more units in, we were able to go ahead and find them in the stairwell at the base. And then units took him into custody and secured her to a safe place. What was Riley's reaction when she saw you all? When I first saw her, you could see her eyes <clears throat> get really big. And uh, she started running towards the door because there was a locked glass door between us and them. And uh, once he, we told him to open up the door, um, units went around her to s separate her from him. And then uh, we were able to take him into custody and secure her. Um, after we secured him, got him into custody, then um, I went back and talked to her um, and was able to get her some food, um, bring her back, spend a little bit of time with her. Um, and then, Unfortunately, I had to leave, go on to other calls, but uh, got to see her laugh and smile. So. Did you buy her the pizza? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't usually get a whole lot of happy endings, so <laughs> us being able to provide that and the closure for the family, um, I guess that means more to me than anything. And getting to see her tonight, um, you know, we don't, we don't usually get to experience that that part and I think that's the best part of it for me. I don't know how or why that we're put in the right place at the right time. Uh, that night we were, all of us, and I don't know, I cannot do anything but, uh, great again in my career and this was the best thing that could happen. Um, I know she has a lot to go through and overcome in the coming years, but with our agencies, she definitely gained a giant family that night. I felt like I, somebody had to protect her. And I felt like it had to be me. And it's been a joy. I imagine you're going to keep up with her. Absolutely. Okay. We're best friends. Riley, is Denise your best friend? Hmm. <laughs> We're best friends, ain't we? To the very end. No, oh, I don't know.
Little Riley and her family are back in North Carolina, but they have built a bond with local law enforcement and hope to come back for a visit. MPD's K-9 unit was joined by other K-9 teams from across the southeast. They were here to brush up on their training skills late last year. 19 K-9 teams from across the state of Tennessee and neighboring states participated in a four-day man-trailing training class held by the National Narcotics Detector Dog Association, or NNDDA. Man-trailing is often referred to as tracking, using different scent work in finding people. Bloodhounds, labs, German shepherds, and German short hair pointers were just some of the canines from different sheriffs and police departments that received training. The canines and their handlers trained at various places in the city, including McKnight Park next to Sportscom and Faith Sanders Marina in Smyrna. MPD canine officer and NNDDA instructor Angela Alexander says, Training is very important. She says it's an opportunity for canines and their handlers to create a bond and to build trust. This year, the organizers took the training to the water and sky. We're getting these dogs some new adventures. So we've had a TWRA come out with a boat and ride the dogs around the lake. And then we have a helicopter. Tennessee Highway Patrols come out with the helicopter to get the dogs up in the air in case there's a situation where we do have to fly or we do have to get in a boat and, and uh, run a trail from there because somebody is lost. There might be a place we can't actually get to on land. NNDDA is a professional nonprofit organization dedicated to the utilization and proficiency of police service, utility, or scent detection dogs for the benefit of law enforcement. Before we go, we want to give a few shout outs. A special shout out to Officer Jonathan Pope on being named the Exchange Club of Murfreesboro Officer of the Year. A shout out to MPD Honor Guard who posted the colors at the Nashville Predators hockey game. A shout out goes to Officer Brooke Nicholson who received the Tennessee Highway Safety Office Impaired Driving Award. Officer Matt McGuire who received the Distracted Driving Award and Officer Jason Ayers for being named Officer of the Year at the THSO Middle Tennessee Region Holiday Meeting in Bell Buckle. Lieutenant Greg Walker accepted the award on behalf of Ayers. A shout out to School Resource Officer Mona Thomas and Officer Andy Taylor for keeping students safe during the Cason Lane Academy walking field trip. Shout outs go to Officer Legarius Sneed and Frank Smith for participating in the Primrose School Road Safety Day. They educated students about safety of the road and stranger danger. A shout out thank you goes to Sergeant Mark Wood for giving a tour of MPD headquarters to six-year-old Carter and his friend Malachi. Both want to become police officers when they grow up. K-9 Boomer was the boy's favorite. Officer Terry Spence receives a shout out for helping to comfort children who were involved in a car crash. Shout outs to Sergeant Brian Mitchell and Tommy Massey who graduated from CELA, the Southeastern Leadership Academy. Massey was elected class vice president and received the leadership award. And final special shout outs to the following MPD employees on their recent retirement. Deputy Chief Eric Cook, Officer Stan Meeks, Officer Alan Cox, Lieutenant Tom Sissom, and Parks Officer Lee Brandon. Remember, we're here to serve and protect you. If you have any questions on the services the Murfreesboro Police Department offers, please give us a call at 615-849-2MPD. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time as we go Behind the Badge.